Oh. 
I want to uh, remind uh, all of ourselves uh, to take a moment and cultivate uh, the bodhicitta motivation or the altruistic uh, motivation seeking complete enlightenment for the benefit of all other sentient beings. And with that kind of uh, at least contrived uh, bodhicitta motivation, uh, we should uh, participate uh, in this discourse on uh, a guide to bodhisattva's way of life. Uh, the teaching uh, that uh, I, along with uh, the translator, uh, decided to uh, give uh, uh, is uh, on uh, Bodhisattva Mahasattva Shantideva's uh, Bodhisattva Char Avatar, a guide to Bodhisattva's way of life. Uh, uh, initially, I thought of uh, uh, restarting uh, Lamrim. Uh, or stages of pattern to enlightenment teaching, and then somehow we thought that maybe uh, we just recently finished it, and uh, perhaps some of you might uh, uh, perhaps may be a bit of uninterested to hear the lumbering again and again. So we thought uh, uh, just to kind of a uh, how should I say um, uh, you know uh, shift our focus, uh, maybe just kind of a, uh, uh, start this uh, the different text. Uh, Shanti Deva's uh, Guide to Bodhisattva's Way of Life. Uh, in accordance with uh, the tradition uh, set forth by our lineage uh, masters, uh, uh, when we uh, often start off uh, with a new uh, text or treaties, uh, you know, we um, uh, would like to uh, kind of highlight uh, uh, the um, you know qualities or the qualifications in modern term of uh, you know the author of a text uh, and uh, then the, the features or the uh, qualities of uh, uh, the text itself or the discourse itself. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to uh, very briefly uh, kind of introduce. Uh, the author of uh, this uh, magnificent uh, uh, text, uh, and uh, so his name is uh, uh, Bodhisattva uh, Shanti Deva. Uh, 
Shantideva uh, was uh, born uh, in a royal family. In other words, uh, uh, his uh, father was uh, uh, king of uh, uh, you know, uh, an ancient uh, uh, kingdom in India. And obviously, uh, the father wanted uh, to coronate uh, Shantideva as uh, heir uh, to his uh, throne. Uh, and uh, so when all the preparations were made uh, for the coronation uh, of Shantideva, the night before, uh, he had uh, a dream of uh, uh, Manjushiri uh, sitting on that throne. Uh, and Manjushiri told him, uh, you cannot sit on this throne. This is my throne. You know, so with that, uh, uh, you know, dream, uh, Shantideva, you know, he uh, decided to escape. Uh, and that very night, uh, so he left uh, his palace, uh, and uh, so he, uh, you know, joined uh, Nalanda Monastic uh, uh, University. Well, Nalanda, that Jesus <laughs> So as uh, Shantideva uh, joined uh, the great uh, monastic seat of learning called Nalanda Monastic University, where uh, you know uh, the monk scholars were engaged in uh, very extensive and intensive uh, you know study uh, programs, uh, there were many great learned uh, you know monk scholars there. Uh, but Shantideva uh, was not so much known for his uh, scholarship or great learning, and as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, he looked such a kind of ordinary uh, writer, uh, a member of uh, the university, uh, that uh, you know people started to have very wrong perception of him. So everybody thought he was good uh, in only three things: in eating, sleeping, and deprecating. That's all he knew, and nobody really recognized that uh, you know he was uh, serious in studies or he had great learning. So they. Uh, in, uh, many of them really wanted to kick him out of the university. And so they thought how to do that. And so it seems that at that time, Nalanda University, you know, the different scholars would take turn uh, either to, uh, how should I say, lead uh, the monk's confession day where you had to recite uh, the Vinaya Sutras like that. So somebody thought if we make him do that, so because he doesn't know anything, uh, he's a dodo, well, uh, they didn't say that, but probably that's what they thought. And so he will be humiliated, and uh, so that's the best way to kick him out. 
Some other stories said uh, that uh, the great scholars would take turn to give uh, discourses or teaching. So they said, let's uh, kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, have him teach. Uh, and so he will be humiliated like anything and uh, that will do it. So then they arranged for his teaching day and they purposely erected a very high throne, right, just to humiliate him, you know. And so that day, Shandi Deva showed up and nobody knew how he ended up on the throne. It's such a high throne, but he was already found sitting on the throne. And then he asked the whole gathering, okay, what kind of teaching do you want me to give? Do you want me to give the teaching that has already been well known, right? Or you want me to give some new teaching here? Uh, and then they said, well, we would like to hear something new. And so sitting on that throne from his uh, mind, uh, you know, he basically taught uh, you know, this uh, discourse, uh, which came to be known as uh, a guide to Bodhisattva's uh, way of life. Mm-hmm. ตอนเสียสิ่งที่เราเสียสิ่งที่เราเสียสิ่งที่เราเสียสิ่งที่เราเสียสิ่งที่เราเสียสิ่งที่เราเสียสิ่งที่เราเสียสิ่งที่เรา
Yeah, others said, no, 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 there were 10 chapters. So they had disagreement about uh, how many chapters uh, were there. Uh, and uh, so what they decided was they decided to go and invite, uh, send invitation to Shantideva uh, to return to Nalanda University, and then he should uh, resolve this issue, you know. Uh, and uh, so when uh, invitation was sent to him, uh, uh, you know, he uh, decided not to return to Nalanda. Uh, he just uh, gave them the advice uh, what they should do. And he said uh, that, um, you know, my teaching consists of uh, 10 chapters as uh, the scholars from the central region, you know, they recorded it, you know. And as far as the Sholoka count, Shalokas are the stands account, there are about thousand of them. And then he said, uh, you should also refer to, uh, you know, the compendium of training, uh, you know, Samukcha. And then they thought, well, maybe he's talking about Arya Nagarjuna's, uh, uh, what we call uh, Abhidhamma Samukcha, compendium of knowledge. Uh, but then when he was uh, consulted, he said, no, uh, it is uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, Shiksha Samukcha, compendium of Bodhisattva trainings that I authored it. So you should refer to that. And then they said, where is it? He said, well, if you go back to my Nalanda cell, you know, up on the roof, uh, I have hidden it. So you can uh, just, you know, get it out and you can refer to that as well. And so those were the advices given to, uh, you know, those who came to invite him and Shantideva uh, decided not to return to uh, Nalanda uh, 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 University. No. Children Tiltown and Nazat uh, Great Shanti Dev uh, uh, was kind of known for uh, performing uh, seven uh, miraculous, uh, uh, you know, powers. Uh, of course, we don't have time to go through every miraculous power here, uh, but I'll share one of them. And what I want to say is that Shanti Dev, he wanted to live uh, like a very ordinary person, right? He didn't want to uh, kind of show off his scholarship or look like he is a great scholar there or anything like that. He just wanted to live like nobody, you know, very kind of hidden uh, yogi type, uh, but very highly uh, realized uh, one. Uh, so one of the miracles uh, that he performed, uh, just as an example of one of the miracles he performed, is that at uh, one point they said in a local, uh, uh, like a kingdom, uh, 
you know, I think the king needed uh, some more uh, security guards. And he applied for the job, you know, and he was uh, recruited as uh, a bodyguard, you know. But Shantideva had uh, a sword which was, uh, you know, put in the shed, but it was a wooden sword, not a real uh, sword, okay. But somehow, you know, he was uh, great in uh, guarding the life of the king. That king was very much pleased with him. And uh, so for the recognition of his service, he was awarded, you know. So Shantideva was awarded for his, uh, uh, you know, uh, dedicated service. But then somebody got jealous of him. And they said, you know, wow, how could he get recognition award? So this jealous person informed the king, said, you know what? Uh, he even didn't have a proper sword, you know. His sword is just a wooden sword, you know. And so it looks like he had a fake person, you know, fake bodyguard there. You know, couldn't trust it. So then the king also started to have some, because his ear was poisoned by this other uh, dodo. Uh, so so king wanted to test him. So king called Shandideva and said, I would like to see your sword. Shandideva said, your majesty, uh, I think uh, uh, it's not a good idea, you know, because uh, it's going to hurt you. King said, no, 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 I want to see your, you know, sword. I said, uh, but I really want you, it's not, you know, it's going to hurt you, or your eyes. He said, no, 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 I insist you show me. And then Shantideva said, okay, in that case, uh, could you please cover one of your eyes and just you know, look at it with the other eye? And King said, sure. And then Shantideva started to kind of pull out the sword from the shade. It radiated so much light and it blinded the king. And he said that his eyeball kind of dropped out of the socket. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then later Shantideva put the, you know, the pupil back into the socket and restored his eye. And so everybody was amazed, you know, by his uh, power. And uh, so that was one of uh, the miraculous power uh, Shantideva uh, uh, displayed. Oh, they should do things like that, didn't they? Because that's the Junji Shemun Zeyn, the teacher was like, Junji Shemun Jawadi, the Yagarang Jawadi, the Pesce, Jawadi Yadda, just the Shemun Rishi. After Shantideva's, uh, you know, teaching, uh, um, his teaching, which turned into this uh, book called uh, A Guide to Bodhisattva's Way of Life, Bodhisattva Char Avatar, in India, uh, other great uh, Indian Buddhist masters wrote commentaries on this, uh, you know, very text of the Shantideva, and there were as many as 110 Indian commentaries on the Shantideva's uh, Bodhisattva Char Avatar. So it is said that at that time there were 110 uh, different uh, commentaries on Shantideva's work by other great uh, Buddhist masters. Uh, and today, uh, we know that at least there are five to six commentaries still exist because these are cited in the different uh, commentaries. And then, of course, uh, other Tibetan masters have written also a number of uh, commentaries on uh, Shantideva's uh, work. So this uh, particular work of uh, Bodhisattva Mahasattva Shantideva, a guide to Bodhisattva's way of life, Bodhisattva Char Avatar, Chinju in Tibetan, become very popular, you know, in the study curriculums uh, in the, you know, ancient India at his time and also uh, in the Tibetan monastic uh, universities. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, many great uh, Kadamba Geshes or the masters, uh, they studied this and not only studied it, they put it into practice, uh, they become highly realized uh, uh, holy beings. Uh, and in the Kadamba tradition, we call this a textual Kadamba. Uh, and uh, so one of the texts, uh, they really focus on is uh, Shantideva's uh, Guide to Bodhisattva's Way of Life. So those great Kadamba masters become highly realized masters, uh, you know, also because of their study 
and application of this text uh, into their life and mind. So Kadamba Masters, uh, one of the very well-known traditions is called uh, Kadam Shungbaba or the textual uh, tradition Kadamba. And of course they studied many other texts, uh, but they are very well known for uh, kind of a focusing on the six uh, particular texts or treatises. And uh, so the six treatises include uh, Great Shanti Deva's uh, uh, Bodhisattva Char Avatar, A Guide to Bodhisattva Way of Life, uh, and uh, uh, um, what called uh, Shiksha Samuksha, uh, Compendium of Bodhisattva Trainings, both authored by the Shanti Deva, and uh, Bodhisattva Bhumi or the Levels, Changsa, and uh, Sutra Alamkara or Ornament of Sutras, Dodijen. Uh, and uh, Jataka Mala, or the life stories of uh, Buddha, uh, rebirth, and Tsom, a collection of miscellaneous discourses or teaching. So these are called uh, the six uh, core texts of uh, the textual Kandamba, uh, you, know, uh, you know, masters. And of course, you know that uh, Shantideva's works are primarily focused on uh, Bodhisattva's uh, uh, what are called deeds or trainings. Uh, and Bodhisattva level has to do with the Bodhisattva's, uh, uh, you know, spiritual grounds. And uh, Sutra Alamkara, or Ornament of Sutra, really presents the complete uh, path and grounds of the Mahayana, uh, you know, vehicle. And Jataka Mala, or the Golden Stories, Life Stories of Buddha, is talking, recounting the lives, uh, previous lives of Shakyamuni Buddha, and uh, how he benefited sentient beings. And then the collection of miscellaneous teachings of the Tsom, uh, it really primarily focuses on uh, understanding impermanence. Yeah. So I only spent uh, a, you know a few minutes uh, just to highlight uh, uh, the uh, the greatness of uh, uh, Shanti Deva as the author of this text. Uh, and uh, how highly realized he was, uh, and uh, miraculous powers uh, that he had. And then, as I said, uh, that many great Kadamba masters, uh, uh, they realized, uh, uh, you know, uh, deep realizations uh, uh, practicing uh, Shantideva's work and other texts as well. So these are the uh, features or the qualities of uh, this discourse, uh, this very text. If you study that, if you apply this to your mind and teaching, you know, you know, one could become highly realized uh, person. So that is the uh, significance of uh, uh, this text. No. As I mentioned uh, that uh, there were many uh, commentaries by the Indian masters as well as uh, the, 
uh, you know, still are, and uh, you know, a number of commentaries written by the Tibetan masters on uh, this particular text of the Shanti Deva, a guide to Bodhisattva's way of life. So, among these uh, commentaries, uh, you know, I have selected uh, this particular commentary uh, written by uh, a master from uh, the eastern uh, part of Tibet, uh, Kham region called Zaba, and his name is uh, Thubden Chuji Tagba. And uh, uh, this is uh, like one of the most recent commentaries, uh, like he belongs to the generation before me, you know, not a long, long time ago. Uh, and I find this commentary not too, uh, how should I say, uh, not too extensive or overly extensive, not too short. In other words, this is a very, uh, how should I say, moderate kind of commentary, you know, not too, too big, not too small. So I find it very useful, and I'm going to use that commentary uh, to teach uh, uh, Shanti Deva's uh, guide to Bodhisattva's way of life. Hmm. 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 で、これ Good uh, so this, uh, you know, commentator, Thubden uh, Chuji Dagba, uh, from uh, the small town of Za uh, in the eastern part of Tibet, Kham, uh, I think he might be belong to a local small monastery there. And uh, so he cultivated uh, one of the most prominent uh, Nyingma masters called uh, Zapa Tu. You know, this is just a well-known name. You know, there's no doubt about how great this master is. Uh, uh, but at the same time, he himself did not identify himself as a Nyingma Pa. Uh, but uh, based upon the reading his works, uh, particularly, uh, he wrote a, a kind of a general presentation on the wisdom uh, chapter of uh, uh, Shantideva's Guide to Bodhisattva Way of Life. Uh, and that pretty much followed uh, exactly what Manjushri Lama Tsongkhapa has uh, illustrated in his uh, you know, Kongpa Rapsal, illustrating the middle way thought, Uma Kongpa Rapsal, and he used the same terminology and expressions, you know. So, and exactly, Dito, almost, right, they explain. So I have a feeling that uh, he is a Giluba, you know, uh, in his own uh, tradition, uh, but he also cultivated uh, Zapadu, a great Yingma master, as one of his uh, uh, gurus. Yes. So he said to himself that uh, he received uh, from uh, the great Yingma master Zabadu right, explanation or teaching 13 times on this uh, guide to Bodhisattva's way of life. Of course, he received many other teachings as well. He said, I've heard you know, Zabadu teach this 13 times. You know? So that means... <laughs> Uh, he really got it down, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have received uh, 
at least uh, you know, twice uh, teaching from His Holiness the Dalai Lama on uh, Shantideva's Guide to Bodhisattva Way of Life uh, at Bodh Gaya. Uh, and so I have received uh, the lineage, uh, you know, oral transmission uh, and explanation from His Holiness on this particular uh, text of Shantideva. Uh, but I'm also using the commentary, uh, which I have no uh, in the teaching received particularly on this commentary. So I'm going to use that commentary I just introduced to you and uh, then refer back to uh, the root text, uh, the, the, the text written by Shantideva himself. So first I will uh, read uh, you know, uh, uh, a little bit uh, from uh, Shantideva's Guide to Bodhisattva Way of Life uh, to give you the blessing of uh, lineage oral transmission uh, followed by explication. What is <coughs> Buddhist <laughs>
Zizo Hamejeu Pamela Rabbi Sanjee Dungi Oh, um, so, Geshe-la, uh, those of you uh, who have, uh, I'm using this uh, particular translation by Stephen Batchelor's of Shanti Deva's A Guide to Bodhisattva's Way of Life. My cover has a different picture, so don't get stuck with the cover picture. Uh, you might have a different picture. Uh, and you might have different uh, translations of this text, you know, but I'm following the one published by the Tibetan Library in India in the 70s. Uh, and uh, so there could be other translations you may be following. So basically, uh, to give us the blessing of uh, lineage oral transmission, uh, Gishala read, uh, you know, from page 3 uh, to page 9, uh, 36 stanzas which constitutes chapter 1. So he gave us the 
you know, the blessing of lineage, oral transmission or chapter one. And now we are back to the beginning of the text uh, and he will start to give uh, explanation. Nang Name Jimmy 
Sajo Batien to the young Gozon Kurgish will be a good journey, Sajo Kurgish, Tajin. She is the Tonti Shangu Shaw, Drula, Sundo Shepa. Pasha Jarry, say, Naja, what the Java Jazu go, Gunama, no, she tricked the Dobe, Togur, Dobe, the Jim Gumbe. Don't such a jashi park, our chiller, she will meet your jung, Munjong Tambelli, said the Jula Michel. Did this sing what I said? Did this sing much? I said, she said, she la shava la tene, da loyan, da lansan, la shojir, hum de chavra. Do ye chere da la ma je la ma de se me ka te so wa da ke sa na ke sa ga la ma pe le te ja se te ba chu chong ne ne tse ge to na do ra cha chong ju si bi shi ba ju bi ju bi shu di che ba la ni tse ni tong ju che ba la ni te ju bi tse Saint-Denis,天主,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说,我说
Jimmy Jagged and so um we st uh, the in the text begins with uh, title in sanskrit jagalket means in indian language literally which really means sanskrit here yeah and in the Sanskrit, this text is called Bodhisattva Char Avatar. Okay? So in Tibetan, it's called Chanju Sembe Chobala Juba. And uh, so as explained, uh, the Bodhi means uh, you know, enlightenment, right? Uh, Buddhahood. And uh, Sattva means uh, one who has the mind of enlightenment, Bodhisattva. Yeah? And uh, uh, Charya means deeds, actions, Bodhisattva actions or deeds. And avatars mean engaging in. So in Tibetan it's called Changju Sembe Chobala Juba. In English it will be engaging in the deeds of uh, you know, uh, Bodhisattvas or engaging in the deeds uh, for enlightenment, if you will. Uh, uh, and um, so the purpose of uh, having this uh, Sanskrit title, often the Tibetan text be begins with Indian language, which means Sanskrit mostly, uh, is uh, to show the authenticity of Buddha's Dharma teaching because this was taught in the Sanskrit language and uh, translated straight from the original uh, source. To authenticate uh, the source of the discourse, uh, Sanskrit language is uh, mentioned in the, the beginning, among many other prominent languages of the ancient uh, uh, India. And another reason for this Sanskrit is uh, to implant a uh, positive imprint on our mind to be able to understand uh, this uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of a divine language, you know, uh, Sanskrit, uh, uh, you know, language. And then, of course, uh, that is followed in the Tibetan text, not in our English translation because somebody skipped it. 
Sangye de Changju Sampatam Jalu Chasolo, uh, prostration to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So that is a salutation by the translator, Tibetan translators who translated uh, you know, this work from Sanskrit into Tibetan. Okay? Uh, and uh, so this is also included so that uh, you know, we Tibetans can appreciate uh, the great uh, dedication of the, you know, the laws of us or the translators, right? Without them, you know, most of us didn't understand Sanskrit, so we don't know what it's all about. So because it was translated into our language, uh, so we have access to this resource. So to remember the kindness of uh, lots of us Tibetan translators, uh, so that salutation was, uh, uh, you know, uh, included. And uh, so there are many different ways of uh, kind of uh, giving name or title to a text, uh, such as sometimes the, you know, the title of a text is based upon the location uh, and uh, for other reasons. But this particular case, uh, the title name is uh, based upon its subject matter, Changju Senbe Chuba, right, the actions of the deeds of the Bodhisattvas. So simply relying upon this very title, those with the sharp faculties can get a deep sense of what this text is about. This is about the Bodhisattva's uh, way of life or Bodhisattva's actions or uh, deeds, you know. Uh, and uh, so that's how uh, this uh, text was, uh, you know, titled as engaging in the, uh, the deeds of uh, uh, Bodhisattva's. No, Conchatse, she <laughs> so as we said uh, that in the Tibetan text, which we don't have in the English translation, uh, there is a salutation by the laws of us or the translators, Tibetan translators who translated uh, Shanti Deva's work from Sanskrit into Tibetan language. It's called uh, prostration or salutation to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Okay? Uh, and um, uh, so before uh, uh, one of the greatest uh, Tibetan uh, uh, Dharma kings called Chirabachen of the 8th century, uh, the translators, you know, uh, you know, they would uh, probably do salutation to uh, whosoever, you know, they had so much faith and respect. You know, it was their choice. But then this great Tibetan uh, king, uh, Chirabachen, uh, so he codified uh, how they should do this, uh, you know, salutation uh, so that we will be able to understand uh, what uh, classification of Buddha's discourses each translation belongs to. And uh, so since his time, Sri Rabaja's time, uh, that if you translate, uh, you know, any sutras, uh, you know, the basket of discourses, uh, then the salutation has to be done to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So from the very salutation itself, we know these are the translations uh, which belong to the sutra uh, classification or category, you know. And if you translate anything from uh, about, uh, you know, Abhidhamma Kosha or the, you know, the knowledge, wisdom, then the salutation has to be to the Manjushri. So we know from the salutation, these translated works are, you know, belong to uh, the uh, Abhidhamma knowledge classification. Yeah. And then if you uh, translate it, uh, anything about Vinaya or the d disciplines, you know, salutation has to be uh, to the omniscient one. Then from the salutation we know that belongs to the Vinaya Pitika or the basket of uh, 
moral uh, discipline. So that was the rule codified by one of the greatest Tibetan kings called uh, Thirabachan in my footnote in the eighth uh, uh, you know, century. And uh, so now uh, some commentary is given about uh, what does the, the etymological explanation of the word Buddha, Sang Kye in Tibetan, right? Sang means awakened, Kye means blossomed. Right? Of course, we don't translate that in English. We just said Buddha, and then we look like we know it. But in the Tibetan, the translation of the Buddha is Sang Kye. There are two words. Sang means awakened. Right? We have to go to the Tibetan word to understand this meaning. Otherwise, how can you explain it in English? Right? <laughs> the word in English, Buddha, has no such meaning, I think. Uh, so the uh, Sang, awakened, means somebody who is awakened from the sleep of ignorance. Right? You have eliminated... Uh, the ignorance, you are completely awakened from that, uh, you know, stupor of ignorance, you know. Kye means blossomed, means your knowledge of the wisdom has bloomed, blossomed to the infinite, Blossom. right, blossomed, okay. It has developed to the infinite. So that is the meaning of Sankhya, right, awakened and, uh, I don't know, when I translate English, it becomes so weird, like developed, what does that mean? Uh, so it is bloomed uh, to the uh, to the infinite level. So that's the meaning of uh, uh, Sangye. Yes. Chimjis <laughs> Jesy uh, so as we said, uh, the Tibetan uh, translation of the Sanskrit word Buddha is Sang Ye. Sang means uh, fully awakened. So you are awakened from the sleep of ignorance. Or in other words, uh, you know, the word awakened has a sense of you have eliminated uh, both the afflictive emotions and obscuration to omniscience. Yeah, that's sung. You are awakened from that slip of afflicted emotions and uh, 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 what called obscuration to uh, omniscience. Kye has the sense of fully developed or uh, fully uh, bloomed, uh, just like lotus bloom, right? So this has to do with the realization aspect of enlightenment, where Buddha has realized everything that is to be uh, realized. So that wisdom is uh, completely, uh, you know, a bloomed uh, a wisdom. Uh, and um, uh, so um, all those uh, kind of things are, are mentioned in the Tajur Pamyi or the Mahupati. It's a codified uh, kind of guide for the translators of ancient time. Uh, and uh, so translators have you know, saluted the Buddhas. Now we have talked about what Buddhas mean. And also Bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas are Changju Semba. And Pa means courageous one, right? These are the real heroes. Because uh, these are the ones who have developed an altruistic uh, state of mind, seeking enlightenment for the benefit of all beings, and uh, they dare to, you know, uh, go through the bodhisattva actions for eons and eons. They never get lazy, tired, you know, bogged down, you know, all of that. They are very courageous that they are going to 
uh, take upon their shoulder, you know, to find enlightenment for everybody, however long it takes, and whatever trials and tribulations they have to go through. They can put up with that. So they are the real courageous one, the real hero, the real warrior, you know. And so to such great heroes, uh, you know, we salute. Translator says, we salute uh, Buddhist, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, <laughs> So as I mentioned before, that during the time of great uh, Tibetan Dharma Raja, uh, Thirabachan in the 8th century, my footnote, uh, that he codified you know, how uh, the translators should do their salutation as they translated uh, different uh, Buddhist texts. And if you are translating anything from Sutra Pitika, Basket of Discourses, you should salute Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So here, salutation is done to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, which means uh, this particular text of Shantideva belongs to uh, the uh, uh, Sutra Pitika or the Basket of Discourses. Yeah. And if you translate anything about uh, uh, wisdom or knowledge of Abhidharma, salutation should be done to Manjushiri. So from that very itself, we know uh, what basket it belongs to. And if you're translating anything about Vinaya or the ethics or disciplines, uh, then the, the salutation should be done to the omniscient one. Uh, and uh, so this kind of thing has been codified. So some refers to this salutation as codified salutation, because codified by the great king. Uh, and others said uh, this is called uh, classifying salutation because based upon the salutation, we know, you know, what, uh, you know, classifications, uh, different translations belong to. Does it belong to Vinaya Pitika, a basket of uh, uh, ethics? Does it belong to Abhidhamma Pitika, basket of knowledge? Does it belong to uh, Sutra Pitika, basket of uh, discourses? <laughs> So as I said, uh, that great uh, Dharma king of Tibet, Sri Rabachan, he codified these uh, rules for uh, salutation for translation. Uh, primarily, mostly Tibetan translators followed that. But if it's, you know, but there are cases where some translators they have not followed this uh, codified uh, uh, what called system. You know, so they just saluted whoever they wanted to salute. And this is mentioned in this commentary, also mentioned by Lama Tsongkhapa in this, uh, you know, like setting, golden speech, uh, uh, you know, uh, commentary. So we will, uh, we stop there today, and the next Sunday we will begin with uh, the opening stanza of uh, uh, you know, Shantideva's uh, chapter one. The chapter one deals with the benefits of developing bodhicitta or awakened mind. So we will uh, pick it up uh, from opening stanza uh, next uh, Sunday. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah. So what is the root translation of June and June? What? The root translation of June.
June and Juke. Uh, the Juke is engaging. What's June? What June? June Juke. Uh, Ch is, yeah, Ch is deeds. Ch is deeds. Juke is engaged. Engaging in deeds, yeah. Ch Juke. Yeah. Um, I have a prayer request. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Uh, prayers have been, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in the Carso Nenar, when you say Carlos, not the Juan Carlos Contreras and Diana Raibon, so when you issue not the and it to my job in our prayer request, uh, prayers have been requested for Juan Carlos Contreras and Diane Raibon. Uh, who have serious health issues, and we know that many others as well. Uh, so we will, uh, you know, uh, do uh, the Medicine Buddha Mantra together, right, and dedicate for them. They don't Sala Maria Menze Dunga Nyogo, Jinye, Junze Radina, Dunya Daji Saj, Yunda Lunza Yaza Dubu, Juda Juda Jun Yambe Yanla, the Omara was a Nadi did it in the 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 Nadi Honne